uh, I'm just here to say hello to everybody, but it will actually be Alessandra Arienzo from the University of Naples, Federico Segundo, or the second, sorry, in Spanish, uh, who will be moderating this whole session. So, Alessandro, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you. It's a very, it's a pleasure to be with you this afternoon um, to this uh, European Educational Leadership Week. Our research corner is dedicated to innovative research on educational leadership for the shortage of educational staff and empowerment of educators. And uh, we have a very uh, tight schedule. We need to use the time at our best. Let me uh, introduce the three invited speakers that we have. Agnes Sorniak. Agnes is a social science researcher at the University of Debrecen in Hungary. Thank you, Agnes, for being with us. Lindsay Malone is Thank the you. director of Further Education and Training at the Waterford and Wexford Education and Training Board in Ireland. And Maria uh, Gaidaroba, who is the president of the World Education Forum Bulgaria, uh, who is accompanied by Todor Atanasov and Manol Manolov. Thank you all of you for being with us. Uh, how will be we will be working uh, this afternoon? Uh, I will give the floor to each of the research group and representative of the research activities to uh, present their work, and then we will have a short chat and at the end, sort of roundtable on the main findings or your uh, work. For all the people who are listening, if you want to join somehow the discussion, your microphone is muted, but you can, uh, however, uh, put your comments or questions in the chat and I will support you to pass the uh, questions or observation to the colleagues who are uh, online. So, um, Agnes, Agnes Horniak, uh, the, important, uh, the importance of teacher motivational factors uh, in the development of educational innovation and retention in the teaching profession is the issue that you are presenting us today. Agnes, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Welcome you. I would like to share my presentation. Okay, welcome you. Uh, I am Agnes Horniak from University of Debrecen, Hungary. Our research title is The Importance of Teacher Motivational Factors in the Development of Educational Innovations and Retention in the Teaching Profession. Uh, what's it about focus? The shortage of teachers and making the profession more attractive is one of the most pressing problems in today's education. We have, uh, have lots of questions about it. For example, what motives are necessary to become a teacher? And how does one become an innovative teacher? And how we, uh, who will teach in the future? If we can see around in the international overview, we can see a uh, keyword. This is a cooperation of teachers. What is the case to success? It is the teachers who, who were collaboratively and able to anticipate the effectiveness of their work. What is the road to success? This is a professional learning communities, PLC. And what's the problem with its acceptance and uh, which is a critical view around it? Uh, we think a different cultural context and different education system. Uh, for example, in Asian education is highly centralized education policy and traditional transfer to uh, knowledge. And the other part of them is in Europe and United States, Asia, Pacific region is the decentralized model. What about Hungarian context? If we can see the PISA test that showed that in Hungary, the dispersion of results between schools is greater than in the OSCD average, and that students' composition predicts achievement in 65% uh, of cases. The teacher who teach here have special working conditions can achieve results with uh, other methods. Uh, we think it's the main uh, methods with uh, teacher collaboration. What about our uh, research? This was made in 2021. What about methodology? 
uh, we uh, use stratified sampling. We need semi-structured interviews with 24 uh, teachers. Uh, one part of them is developed educational innovation. In the other parts of them uh, uh, didn't develop educational innovation. Uh, we, uh, these teachers were uh, in secondary school, one of them uh, in comprehensive schools and the uh, other of them uh, were vocational schools. Uh, they worked in disadvantages area and uh, the data uh, were analyzed by qualitative content analysis with ASLAS T7. We had uh, three research questions. The one is what are the motivational factors that enable teachers to make adequate professional decision, uh, decision and that their pedagogical problem solving ideas and innovations don't remain isolated data? And the second main question is which motivational factors can be identified as drivers or barriers to the development of innovations and which are responsible for retention in the teaching profession? And the last question is what motivational factors influence a teacher to become innovative in a disadvantaged environment in Hungary and is to be able to make adequate discussion by processing his professional capital and using his network of contacts uh, that be strengthening career stability. And look at the table one. This is about motivations, factors and sub-factors in the group developing uh, education innovation. In the, uh, internally, the uh, individual motivational factors confirm in previous re research results were identified during our investigation. The uh, reworking career nature of the field. Uh, the need for self-realization variety, the nature and beauty of knowledge transfer, the transfer of lasting value, the joy of working with children. In the case of work related internal motivation factors, in addition to helping students achieve stu uh, success and influencing their lives, the interviews attributed an important route to the possibility of parental contact and the uh, promotion of the school. Among the external individual motivational factors, we identify the possibility of professional development, the important role of job security, the importance of benef uh, financial benefits and the possibility of building an intellectual career. In the case of work-related external motivational factors, the interviewers consider the role of positive experiences related to previous learning and teaching, the stimulating role of employer expectations and employer support to be important. Furthermore, we identify another motivational factors in this circle which was the stimulating effect of contact with other uh, institutions and organization for the development and registration of educational innovations. The result of the research confirmed the professional capital theory model of Hargreaves Fulham, according to which the innovative teacher seeks to develop his own professional capital while constantly expanding his network of relationship and with the help of all this, he can effectively respond to pedagogical situation in uh, possession of the decision-making capital. If we see in the table two, uh, this is about lack of motivation regarding the non-registration of educational innovation. We in investigated which lack of motivational factors hindered the development of educational innovations and their registration. In addition to the lack of self-realization, lack of need to variety and lack of self-confidence which respect the lack of individual internal motivation, and difficulties uh, caused by burnout and personal life crisis were identified. As a lack of motivation related to the individual workplace, we encountered a low degree of effectiveness 
on the uh, students' leaves. And generations uh, differences, methodological differences, and a lack of uh, subject methodological challenges appeared among them. We also identified the lack of professional development and financial benefits are barriers to individual external motivation. As a lack of external motivation related to negative experiences related to previous learning and teaching, excessive employers expectations, uh, a hostile workplace atmosphere appeared, and we identified other negatively influencing factors such as overload, lack of interest from colleagues, different professional interests in the between colleagues, and the lack of information. In several cases, the factor showing a lack of motivation could already be identified in the year following the start of the career, the lack of treatment of which was combined with the lack of additional motivational factors, which hasn't uh, conductive to innovative behavior and caused career abandonment. Uh, as a summary, uh, we say that isolated teacher behavior can't sustain in the long term in the world of a performance oriented education system. The key to sex, uh, student success is for teachers to be able to use their existing relationship capital based on their professional base to uh, activate their decision making capital, they are providing adequate answers to challenge and creating good practices. And um, the recommendation applied to the teachers' educational policy, legal framework, teacher training, educational system, and uh, uh, leader dire director. Such as a leader is needed who can use the capital created in the uh, community for the benefit of the students. On the part of the teachers, the need to acquire common knowledge and continuous feedback regarding the effectiveness of their work is essential. It is uh, the uh, creation and sustain uh, stability for a legal framework that develops mm. and supports continuous professional development and innovation uh, potential in a fundamental uh, condition for the quality development of education. And uh, in continuing education, it's necessary to give uh, gather and phrases to the development of the need for continuous professional development. And the last um, thing in the course of the future te teacher training is it's necessary to develop the uh, competencies that help teachers uh, to become uh, a cooperative and they can um, uh, solve uh, them um, uh, problems. And um, uh, we did uh, to help of uh, them uh, uh, existing knowledge in the new context in the future. Thank you for your attention. Uh, <laughs> thank you, okay, thank you, Agnes, yeah, for your end of my presentation. And <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> thank you. That was thank really, you. really very, very interesting. Uh, we also have some questions for you from in the chat from uh, Michael Riscu. Uh, Michael. Uh, is wondering when, how the concept of motivation relates with the meaningfulness of work and how uh, we can draw and uh, understand the satisfaction of the, of the work. So if your research give us some hints on the concept of motivation and how it relates with meaningfulness of the work. Okay, thank you very much. And by the way, there's also from Miku, if you can answer another observation on the relevance uh, of teacher's autonomy, if teacher's autonomy is a strong push for motivation. Uh, I uh, confirm that uh, the uh, theory from Hargreaves and Fulland mm -hmm. that uh, I had said, uh, the innovative uh, teacher uh, uh, strives to develop uh, his own professional uh, capital, and uh, they can make relationship with each other. And uh, uh, I think the 
uh, stable um, um, education policy uh, have to um, uh, uh, have to be innovative teacher. Uh, and uh, the innovative teacher can de facto uh, re respond to pedagogical situation uh, in um, uh, possession of the decision making capital. Thank you. Thank you very much, Agnes. We will come back to some of this issue in the roundtable because I know that there are some issues that are common to all these uh, research activities that we discussed today. So I will pass the floor to um, Lindsay Malone. Uh, Lindsay from Waterford and Wexford Education and, Education and Training Board, Ireland. And uh, Mind the Ladder is the title of this uh, research, an exploration of the lived experiences of women in senior leadership roles in other education. Lindsay, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much, Alessandro. Uh, thank you. Yes. Um, OK, so um, this study is a, um, a presentation about my study, Mind the Ladder, an exploration of the lived experiences of um, women in senior leadership roles in higher education. Uh, so as you said, my name is Lindsay Malone. So I am Director of Further Education and Training in the Education Training Board in Ireland, in Watford and Wexford. I'm also a part time lecturer in Southeast Technological University and then a student with Lancaster University, where I carried out this study as part Part of my PhD program with the university. So the background to my topic, um, gender equality is, is not new um, and it's not the first time it's been looked at, but in Ireland a lot has happened in relation to gender equality um, in higher education since 2015. So in 2015, there were a number of high profile cases where women successfully won their cases in the high court because they could prove that they were not promoted on the grounds of their gender. So as a result of those cases, a lot of new policies, new plans, new initiatives were brought about in Ireland to try and promote gender equality in the higher education sector for women. So, um, and you can see a number of them there on screen. So for me, um, what happened is that our higher education institutions are funded by the organisation, the Higher Education Authority, and the Higher Education Authority since 2016 have published a gender profile report every year. And the gender profile report is used as a key measurement tool to assess the effectiveness of the gender equality initiatives which have been rolled out in higher education. But when you break that down, what that means means is we are assessing how well we are achieving gender equality by how many women are occupying senior, le senior leadership roles in Ireland. So as you can see from the um, visuals on screen, the president is the most um, senior person in any higher education institution in Ireland. So in 2016, we had five women compared to 21 men. And then by 2021, we had eight women and 13 men. So what and you can see that there's a drop off. So some of our institutes of technologies came together to form new institutions, which are technological universities. But the good news story when you look at that visual is that there are more women occupying presidency roles than there were in 2016. Similarly, if you look at the level of senior lecturer roles, which are the second most um, senior um, levels in the organisation outside of the executive, we can see that in 2016 there were 464 women and by 2021 there were 566 women occupying those roles. So when you consider that the Higher Education Authority are measuring gender equality success by counting how many women occupy those roles, we can see that there has been an increase in the amount of women. However, for me, that doesn't really tell us if we're achieving gender equality. It tells us that there are more women in senior roles, but not how they experience being in those roles and not how they experience progressing into those roles. So for me, the problem that I wanted to look into was that we don't have any qualitative data. We have no empirical evidence that the lived experiences of women in leadership roles has improved as a result of those initiatives since 2015. So that's what I sought about to address and uh, the problem, which was to generate empirical data. 
So to do that, my aim was to actually assess if there is any real change happening for women who occupy those senior leadership roles in Ireland. And to do that, I had two objectives. One was to examine and understand any challenges that they continue to experience and have experienced in their careers to date. And the second was to use a more strengths based approach to look at these women that I wanted to carry out the research with. They are in the senior leadership roles. So essentially, they've made it, they got there. So I wanted to know how did you get there? So if these challenges exist, which are well written about in, across multiple countries, that women do experience more challenges than men, certainly in career progression. So notwithstanding that, they still made it into those senior leadership roles. They still are the presidents and vice presidents. So what I felt was important was to understand how did you get there? So that was the second element of the research. So the methodology was qualitative, given that we already have quantitative data. We know how many of them there are, but I wanted to sit down and explore it with them from a phenomenological perspective, an interpretist approach to understand their lived experience. To do that, I developed a theoretical lens that took two main theories. One was around Lewis McNay's idea of agency. So Lewis McNay would state that we're doing so much focusing on the on the challenges that women experience. We're losing sight of the agency that they actually have. We spend too much time looking at the barriers and not enough about looking at what enabled them to get over the barriers. And the second lens was Nancy Fraser, who's well known and well published in the area of challenges that affect women. And her um, theory surrounds the idea of parity of participation. So in order for social justice to prevail, we need to have an equal um, an equal ability to participate as men and women and any other gender. So I use that lens to unpack the challenges. So my timeline was in October 2018. I started the PhD. I was granted approval for ethics in 2021. By April, then I had sent an invitation to all of the equality, diversity and inclusion units across all of the universities and technological universities in Ireland. In May and June, I conducted the interviews. And then at long last, I've submitted the PhD um, last month. So um, that's just an overall timeline of the actual uh, research process. So then in terms of who those women were that took part to my study. I had hoped to engage 12. I received 24 who were interested to take part and that's translated to 20 interviews in total. Um, the findings then were that yes, women do still experience challenges and those challenges are across three different lens lenses. The first is redistribution. So they face challenges around flexible working, social reproduction, health related matters like menopause. The second is that they feel they are working in a male dominated culture and some have experienced and continue to experience bullying. And the other was around recognition, that there's a lack of cha tangible change to culture and some of the roles that women occupy as senior roles are feminised roles. And the supportive um, elements and the strengths that enable them to progress were that they have their own sense of individualised agency. Some of the mechanisms that have been brought in to drive gender equality are working, but slowly. Um, leadership, they believe in collective leadership um, and leadership as a visionary um, empowered them to progress. Mentorship, all 20 women confirmed they had all experienced being mentored and would advocate for a national mentoring system. And then looking at agency in terms of they are ambitious, they use their own sense of choice and their resiliency. Ambition is an interesting one because there is existing literature that challenges that and says women don't progress because they're not ambitious enough. That was not a finding from this research. So recommendations really in the first instance are to make sure that policies are clear for all staff in an equal way to avail of different structures that might exist, that senior leaders continuously engage in CPD, particularly to stay abreast of issues that will and continue to affect women and all genders so that they can continue to evolve as a leadership team and that we look at a national mentoring approach as some of the key recommendations. So in total, I feel I've made a significant contribution to knowledge with this research because for the first time in Ireland, we now have qualitative research that tells us what those lived experiences of women are and more importantly, what factors enable them to overcome the barriers they experience so that they could progress in their careers into senior leadership posts. Thank you, Lindsay. Really, really clear and uh, very interesting research. Uh, just a couple of questions in the couple of minutes that we that we have. I really think this idea of working on uh, experience uh, gives us quite a lot. Usually we focus on laws, rules, 
uh, but then the, your point of view uh, concerning uh, experience. It, do you think that collaborative leadership can somehow support to take into account also the concrete experience of persons and women uh, mostly? Exactly, I do. And I think that we need both women and men to have successful leadership. And so what came from the findings here were that in many instances, those women who've made it into leadership roles, that collectively they've had to support one another, whether that's at meetings or in bigger scale events, to actually champion one another. So that's where the, the title came from, Mind the Ladder. There's a sense of minding one another and that there are leaders together. I think the day of focusing on one person at the helm as the main leader is starting to fall by the wayside really that we need different people with different viewpoints and different skill sets to really emphasize what leadership rather than the leader is about, which was a major finding from this particular um, piece of research. And one more question. Do you think if, if you had to, ch to choose one main tool, one main policy uh, to, to, to start working on that, on that uh, what would you do? What would you choose? What do you do think it's the, the first, yeah. the main one? Um, thanks, Alessandro. I would choose mentoring. And there are there is research out there that suggests women don't want to be mentored and that other women feel that it, it, it suggests that women require fixing if they're open to be mentoring, mentored, whereas the findings from this absolutely refute that. The women felt that one of the biggest game changers that enabled them to progress was to have a more knowledgeable other, whether mm. male or female, they were a mixture, but to have access in a fair and equitable way to a more knowledgeable other that they can learn from and learn with with was the key factor for all 20 women. So absolutely for me at the moment, it's very sporadic what is and isn't available in different universities across the sector. So what should be available is an open, transparent mentorship program that women co-create. It isn't done for yes. them. It isn't done to them and it isn't offered to them. It's made with them. Um, and that that's what I believe will effectively lead change. Great. Thank you, Lindsay. Uh, just Thank to you. report to a couple of observations from the chat. Uh, Mikkel is asking us for uh, some data on the percentage of men and women in the higher education. I guess every teacher report uh, usually do present us with some data, but Lindsay, if you have, we will uh, help sharing it. And also, uh, thank you for the attention that you had, but also uh, uh, Agnes on the methodology was really, really much appreciated by our, our colleagues in the in the chat, the attention to methodology. Thank you very much. So uh, let's move to the third that we will come back to some of these issue afterwards in the in the round table uh, to the third uh, guest speaker, Maria Gaidarova from the Foundation World Education Forum in Bulgaria with Todor um, Atanasov and uh, Manol Manolov. I don't know how you organize your presentation. Uh, if you can be, uh, if you can present your uh, research case, transformation of Bulgarian education in the age of digitalization, re review of developments and challenges. Let's say five, six minutes so that we can also uh, chat a bit on your presentation. To you, the floor. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you. My name is uh, Manol Manolov. Uh, I'm associate professor in the uh, University of uh, Veliko Ternovo. And uh, we conducted uh, the survey among the uh, teachers. And uh, it's the mm, it's the main aim of uh, our uh, uh, our research and uh, it was an uh, anonymous uh, survey among uh, 70 Bulgarian teachers who work in uh, innovative schools only and approved by uh, Ministry of Education and Sciences. The subject of the research are professional experience, used resources, technologies, methods and pedagogical approaches. Based on the results obtained, we found the effectiveness of the distance learning uh, combined with the application of uh, innovative methods and web-based educational technologies together with a wide variety of uh, technological tools. On the other hand, we made an overview of the publication uh, 
um, on the integration and use of ICT in higher education, and that's our uh, research. And uh, at first point, what are our uh, the benefits of digitalization for teachers and head teachers? One of the priority area of a strate uh, strategic framework for development of education, training and learning in the Republic of Bulgaria on digitalization in education is connected with the educational innovations, digital transformation and sustainable development. It em emphasizes on the digital skills and competences which uh, are a priority in the whole educational spectrum. Teachers tend to feel isolated in their own schools and are often tied to a school experience. Crowded curricula uh, do not allow them much time to explore innovative pedagogies. Key elements for the future of our education and the teaching, uh, teaching profession are related to the changing role of teachers and teacher education in high school, the role of the schools, the need for retraining in the context of 21st century skills, the role of formal and non-formal learning competency approach, technological innovation and the rapid development of a new uh, technologies, the growing importance of personal data, data protection and privacy issues. Uh, with the help of innovative approach in uh, lesson activities, teachers are not the one and only source of information. They are mentors, leaders and facilitators. That's uh, the way uh, that they feel and they share to us and how the researchers in higher education can uh, uh, be more effective uh, with uh, these educational policies. We uh, we have found uh, six contemporary researches which look at digital transformation, and uh, we can begin uh, with a look at how digital technologies are reshaping our educational landscape, particularly through the lens of teaching Generation Z. These digital natives uh, bring a new dynamic into the classroom, prompting an essential shift in teaching methodolo methodologies. Research in New Bulgarian University explores how faculty development programs can bridge the digital divide, emphasizing interactive and engaging learning exp experiences tailored to our, uh, our young adults. The COVID-19 pandemic has an uh, Undeniably accelerated Bulgarian journey toward the digital transformation. And Sofia University's pivot to the digital platform adims the crisis, highlight the challenges and innovations in education, research, and administration for sure. Uh, this transformation uh, transformation through rapid unveils opportunities uh, opportunities for enhancing the quality and accessibility of education. Uh, for example, in uh, higher uh, education, in the framework of the project Modern A, uh, modernization in partnership through digitalization of academic ecosystem uh, financed under the operational program Science and Educational for Smart Growth, a total of uh, 17 uh, joint programs with advocated digitalization have been developed nine universities, uh, employers and organization, and it gives opportunities for scientists to focus their efforts on measuring effectiveness and benefits in order to uh, differential the different benefits for different scientific uh, fields. Uh, so um, very important point is collaboration between researchers and education. Uh, policy makers should facilitate uh, collaboration between uh, researchers and educators to bridge the gap between theory and practice in the implementation of generative AI tools and innovations. We need to take into consideration ethical concerns uh, privacy protection, data security, and to have a common framework safeguarding the rights and well-being for students and uh, 
educators. Uh, Manu, so if, if I if I may, uh, one thing that is very interesting in your research is the positive impact of digitalization and the idea of competency approach. Could you please say something more about this competency approach and also uh, how do you address if there is any uh, uh, rejection from the teacher of digitalization uh, or skepticism or difficulties with using these tools? Is there anything like that that you? Okay. I don't know if so, Todor. If I can join. Yeah. yeah uh, so my name is Todor Tanasov. And uh, I'm a deputy principal of uh, the English uh, of the foreign language school Ivan Vazov in Plovdiv. And I'm a representative of one of the schools who have been researched. So basically, we are the first Google certified school in Bulgaria and in Eastern Europe. And we are holding the label of innovative school. So I can ask uh, how these innovation, innovative approaches have been received by the teachers across Bulgaria. So basically of significant importance is the balance between the use of new technologies and the traditional learning practices, depending on the student's age, as well as the development of teachers' skills in teaching online and using and creating digital content and resources. In this context, uh, building competences in students and teachers for creating, editing, enriching, and updating of digital content together with skills in safe internet use, recognizing risks, threats, fake news, and etc., has been vital. A lot of the measures necessary for achieving these aims have been implemented. Uh, part of them are connected with creating of a modern educational environment throughout the whole preschool and school educational system, specifically starting with the furniture, the equipment in the classrooms, the laboratories, the STEM centers that we're building. Uh, combined with digital curriculum content and turning them into basically a digital classroom with digital teaching and learning materials, using them via integrated educational platforms and cloud technologies. Uh, improving the attractiveness of the teaching profession, by providing suitable working condition, motivating, motivating pay, professional development, achieving a balance between personal and professional life will contribute to attracting more young teachers, increasing the well-being and better quality of education as a whole. Mm -hmm. So a targeted cooperation policy at a European level to promote mobility amongst teachers, create networks within the European uh, education area, will help member states to modernize their education and training system based on certain common priorities. So shared good innovative practices and paths to success, uh, application of a systematic approach to the professional development of new teachers, uh, which stems from support to development of their competences through continuing qualification, have brought additional value. Uh, and to answer the other question, is there opposition to, to these changes that are currently going on? Uh, the strategic framework for development of educational training and learning in Bulgaria until the year of 2030, is connected to the educational innovations, digital transformation, and sustainable development. By working together and sharing our ideas, I'm sure we'll be able to help ensure that the use of innovation will improve the education. Uh, the way that we do education and training needs to be transformed in, and to include digitalization and, of course, artificial intelligence. Teachers have already realized their new role in transforming the educational system and incorporating computer technologies both in every lesson and for their self-training and self-improvement. Their role is changing from carriers of information and knowledge. They become organizers, consultants, and mentors. Thank they you. Need to be up to date with yes. Yeah. Uh, th there is a um, question in the chat. That it's a very interesting one uh, from uh, Mikkel again. Are the teacher expected to handle all involved with the digital tech te teaching by themselves, or do they work with, for example, digital experts as close work pairs or teams? Are teachers supported on the technological management of the laboratories, for example, 
and they can they work with pairs uh, on getting knowledge on how to use technologies? Thank you for the question, uh, Mikhail. Really, uh, the implementation of uh, of the of the digital teaching is uh, is something that may be scary initially, uh, and we don't provide pairs. We provide teams. Mm. Uh, we don't uh, push anyone to uh, implement uh, computer technologies in their teaching methods, but we prefer to show them, try them, uh, have them experience it, understand it, then implement it, try it, have the support of the other more advanced colleagues, have the feedback, have the feedback of the, let's say, unwilling colleague to implement it. Because for me, it's important to understand why he doesn't feel confident. Uh, and it's all about communication, about trial and error, of course. Uh, we're not pushing them straight away to the digital classroom, of course. Uh, currently, we have, of my colleagues, I think, around 80 percent i can guarantee that they're technically and teaching uh, to, to to teach digitally but we're still working on it it's still a process so thank uh, you yes, great they, they receive the support needed thank, thank you, you todor uh, i will now i will now ask uh, agnes and lindsay to step in as uh, to the round table because there are some issues that all your uh, research uh, raised one is motivation, how we can uh, support strength and motivation of teachers. And uh, I, I would ask you uh, your answer from the research uh, that you are currently doing. So let's start um, from Agnes, please. Yeah, OK. Um, mm, speaking was uh, very interesting for me also, uh, uh, because I think uh, uh, digitalization in uh, the education, um, uh, two things uh, in uh, secondary school uh, level and in the higher education. Uh, I think uh, to become an innovative teacher in the uh, secondary school, uh, uh, have to face to face contact. It's very important. I think uh, the uh, digital digitalization in our education is uh, uh, important things, but the face-to-face -face contact uh, is uh, uh, very uh, 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 important. Yeah. Is, uh, very important things. Yes. Uh, and um, uh, I think the teacher have to support the students uh, and they have to uh, do with the, uh, each other and um, uh, the uh, teachers have to uh, make a decision for a special um, uh, situation. Uh, and um, uh, the teacher said that um, very important of uh, uh, very important uh, the possibility of building an intellectual career. Uh, uh, this is uh, um, from teacher and uh, the uh, and to the students uh, have to new ideas about uh, education. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, confirmed uh, me that the um, uh, uh, important uh, role of job security and, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, contact uh, between uh, other teachers from other institutions uh, very important. Thank you. Thank you, Agnes. Lindsay, uh, well, motivation, you already discussed quite a lot about that, but if you can say a bit more. Mm. 
Sure. So I think uh, the women in this research definitely demonstrated that they were very motivated. They wouldn't have progressed in their career without that motivation. So it was a key factor in their own sense of agency and their collective sense of agency. And I think they're also motivated beyond themselves. So they're motivated to champion other women. So I think that's where then it ties into the mentoring piece that for them, they've essentially made it into the more senior leadership roles already in higher education. So there was a sense of being motivated to pay that forward for the next next um, level career uh, women coming down the track and the way that they see that motivation coming through is to provide a more cohesive mentoring system so that that motivation that other women experience earlier in their career can be um, culminated and brought together mm. in, to enable them to progress in their own careers. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. I don't know, Todor of Manol uh, or Maria, mm. if we can. <laughs> How can we motivate people to to face the challenge of digitalization ourselves? <laughs> I can say that uh, to add to what Agnes told us, uh, it's building trust, uh, it's empowering people using uh, digital content, and it's thus the idea is not to, to replace human contact, uh, it's just to enable another option and another possibility for human contact and to enable everyone to be uh, a part of the educational process. Hmm. Todor, this brings me to uh, another uh, question for all of you that seemed to me very relevant from your research, that it's the possibility for teachers and, and, and staff and leaders, indeed, uh, to be uh, fully actors of the processes, the, the possibility for them to uh, use the voice, the right to be prophets on, the, on, on their own uh, work. Uh, if you, your idea on, on that, is, is it missing in your context, or if you think that things are improving of giving teachers the possibility to raise their say? Who wouldn't dream of a generation of uh, teachers who would possess the, those idealistic qualities, passion, vision uh, of the prophet, uh, bringing the light, let's say, in the midst of darkness, if we are using so, such poetic words, uh, beckoning students to reach be beyond their limits. Of course, we would like that. but thing is that uh, motivation alone, uh, all those great qualities that I just mentioned are, are not enough. Uh, however, uh, if you're burning in desire of doing this thing, you need the, the, the minimum of the competences, of the technicalities to do your day-to-day -day job. So none of those things are enough and we always strive for the balance. So you have the groundwork of your technical skills, of your methodology, of your pedagogy. But if you can go further on and be really the prophet, what more can you say? That's the perfect teacher, I think. Thank you, Todo. Lindsay, your point of view on, on that, empowering stuff. Yeah, I think empowering staff is really important. And again, it came out in my own research, the importance of it. Um, and certainly for me, it was less so about teachers and more so about gender equality for people in, in leadership roles, but using their sense of the collective voice. So the gender equality movement has created a space and a platform where women are now sharing their experiences, both those that were difficult um, and so others can learn from that and also sharing their experiences around how they made it forward. And one of those is around um, assessing their their level of voice. Someone asked in the chat earlier there, and um, you know, is there still a sense that certain positions are ring fenced for men? And I think um, the answer to that is that yes, in some instances they are. Even though there are more uh, leadership more women in leadership positions in Ireland in higher education. In the main, that's because we've created a lot of equality, diversity, inclusion, leadership posts, and over 85% of the people in those are women. 
So it would suggest that we are now feminizing senior leadership posts and predominantly moving women into those posts rather than equally spreading women across all of the senior posts that already exist. So I think research like this enables a platform for women to share their sense of voice on matters that affect them to affect positive change for other people coming down the track. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Agnes. No, yeah, your perspective on on that. Giving voice uh, to the teachers and staff to motivate them. Uh, uh, I have uh, another idea uh, with this mm. question. This is the lack of uh, self-realization. Uh, mm. Because I think uh, uh, between teacher and uh, uh, students, and if we uh, see the uh, teachers uh, uh, collection, uh, I think uh, uh, 20, 30, 40 uh, ages between them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the older generation uh, 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 can take contact uh, with uh, digitalization of uh, education and uh, uh, they used uh, the old uh, methodology and they think that is uh, um, uh, very good in nowadays or so. And um, uh, I think uh, this uh, 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 go to the burnout uh, when uh, they can't uh, be a, a realization of uh, yourself uh, well. Thank you, thank you, Agnes. So uh, we have almost uh, finished our time. It was really a pleasure for you to have you and uh, uh, your presentation were very inspiring. I really hope that we will have the chance to keep discussing and keep working and researching together and thank you to all the participants online. We have 31 people uh, with us. Uh, there are some interesting notes in the chat if you want. Uh, some of our speakers have already been working with Elne and have already some publications uh, with Elne that are very interesting. Uh, so thank you, Maria. Thank you, Agnes. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Manol and Todor for your wonderful presentation and research. Hope to see you soon. Thank you to Elne for this wonderful opportunity to join together and very inspiring talks. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, just one final thing before you leave. I just want to say that tomorrow we will continue with our webinars. And tomorrow is actually the International Digital Learning Day. So we're going to have a lot of webinars on digital learning and other digital skills um, things. So please join us tomorrow for more webinars. And thank you very much, Alessandro, also for moderating. Um, and thank you to all the speakers, of course, and all the participants. So uh, we will see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.